Hello everyone and welcome back to Let's Play Golden Sun. In the last part, we finished off Lumpa Fortress and now we're finally gonna leave this damn place. After two parts, so it's not really that much of a finally now, is it? Oh well! What, what, what the? I think I just saw someone just now. Yeah, I saw something too. You think the Dompa's henchmen have found us? Not likely, they wouldn't be out here. Huh, you think there's someone else out there? And apparently Hammond knows this guy, his name is Bunza. It's not the oddest name I've ever heard. And then one explanation later, this conversation happens. Once Isaac made up his mind, we all decided to come save Hammond. Hey yeah, Ivan, you're saying this was all Isaac, Isaac's idea? Well, I am the main character and I'm in control of every single one else from you in battle, so yes. But no, I mean you Mia, and Mia helped us too. And he's thanking Ivan for this. You sure did a good job finding this cave, Bunza. Yeah, this well, that thing, it's really kind of out there in the world map now, isn't it? Apparently he didn't want to come here anyway. Uh, the only reason he came... Well, then why did you come here? Because he recalled when Hammond told him about being a successful merchant that it dangers worth the price. But this is actually some pretty good advice on being a merchant, but only back then. In today's world, it's a bit different. So you came to serve the villagers even though you despised Dodonpa? Fate put this opportunity before you. But why did you think a Kalei merchant be permitted into Lumpa? And apparently he wasn't going to be let in. Yet knowing that, you still came? Apparently that huge commotion, caused by Dampa's rumors, gave him a bit of an advantage. And the idea that Hammond was still here. And that's how you found this cave. I bet you couldn't do any, find any way to get the gate open from this side. Yeah, you kind of need to be psychic. And something's up. Why'd you say it like that, Bunza? Apparently, Dodonpa's henchmen have been combing the areas surrounding us. Let's see if they have to arm Hammond to find him. They might capture Hammond again. Let's get out of here quickly. But we have to escape without being seen by Dodonpa's henchmen. What should we do, Isaac? Should we stay and fight? No, not with these people are with us. And he has a wagon nearby that we can ride on. A wagon? Won't a wagon stand out if it were searched by Dodampa's henchmen? Apparently he's been here since, the befo since before the commotion started, so, since they've seen his wagon around, they don't suspect him of being involved. Which is actually a pretty clever idea. Should we ride in the wagon too? Yeah, I think if you say no, you just uh, walk back. And no, I don't have any unfinished business. If you don't have any unfinished business, let's get back onto Calais. Lady Liana will be so happy, won't she? And now we start on our way back, finally. Where's the wagon? Oh, you're magical. Got it. You know, doing the way the overworld sprites are generally, it is kind of get it hard, kind of hard to get a context as to how far the cave is actually from the entrance. Well, this place doesn't look familiar for clay. And we've arrived. Somewhere. Arrived where? Apparently, his palace is a back entrance. An underground passage? Why? I don't understand. Why bring the wagon in this way? And his attention might be here in Kalei, so yeah. Apparently we have to take the town's entrance. What? Why? We'll just go this way with you. Apparently we have to go through the main town. I'm confused. Yeah, so am I. Why shouldn't we just go in this way? Apparently it would raise suspicions. After all, wouldn't it be strange for people who aren't even in town suddenly walk down the palace? Eh, what RPGs ever brought that up before, huh? Yeah, we understand.
So we have to go through the front entrance. Yay! Oh, by the way, I should mention, there's not much happening in this part, but plot, and uh, some slight collection. That was kind of a roundabout way to do that, dude. <laughs> anyway, welcome back to Calais. No, I don't think I mentioned it earlier, but I really do love this song. Not this song, though. No. This song sounds too much like Dragon Quest first off to me, and uh, I'm just not a fan of the instrumentation. Anyway, here, there's actually a chest we can get now that we weren't able to get before, I believe. A water jacket! Which is actually a pretty good thing. It resists water and fire, which is a pretty good stat boost, which is pretty good in of itself, but also a decent stat boost. I'm gonna give that to Ivan, I think, off screen. It would replace his, uh. Which one? Not the Mithril shirt, the other torso type equipment he has on. I forget which one it is. <coughs> hey, Liana. And she's pissed! We, she told us not to go, but we went anyway, because we're RPG heroes, duh! Yeah, we had a more pressing quest in hand, but at the same time, rescuing everyone seems to be the duty of an RPG hero, unless you're a cloud from Final Fantasy VII, in which case you gotta let the entire sector die. I, I had to rescue Hammond, no matter the cost. Hold on, we all wanted to save Hammond as badly as Ivan did. You didn't really sound like it sometimes, Garrett. It doesn't matter, Garrett. I'm the one at fault. I made a mistake. We'll leave on, on Felix's trail immediately. Isaac, we should be going. Ivan, is that really what you want? Well, if Ivan says so, should we go, Isaac? If he wants to. They want. Apparently, Ham is telling us to go to, to Hesperia. Apparently that Jupiter death that he got met all those years back, uh, told him to go there. It's a continent to the west of the one we're currently on. What are we gonna find in Hesperia if we go? That, though, he's not sure of. The continent to the west on the other side of the sea? And we set out. I don't really like Liana, I'm not gonna lie, because, uh, she kinda comes off as mean to me. Well, uh, well obviously comes off as mean, but she's really a bit ungrateful in that scene, in my opinion. Anyway, uh, yeah, the Shaman's Rod, uh, for that we got way back in, like, part four. Uh, you can actually have been able to equip that to him for a while, but it's just not that good. And here's the thing, you can't sell it either for reasons, so we're stuck with it for a while. Oh, well. I don't think it's in this sequel, though. I forget, though. It's been a while since I played the last stage. And welcome back here. Yeah, we haven't been here in a while, have we? This is where we got, um, uh, Mars Jin earlier on in the game. But now we want to head up here. Because now that we've done some more stuff, we can actually do some more progress in here. First off, we can go through here. And walk down here. To find Bunza. And some treasure chests, which contain a sleep bomb, uh, some money, a lucky metal, and uh, I forget what the last one is, a potion. Needless to say, not all that's going to stay in my equipment and my stuff. And now I need to push this statue in front of that waterfall, which takes a while to say the least. And doing that, you know, with that water level, which causes this puddle to appear, which we can use frost on in order to make it freeze up into a pillar to get that treasure chest. And in this treasure chest, we got Spirit Gloves, which are a, pretty much a shield-type item that boosts your elemental power. Off-screen, I'm actually gonna give this to Ivan, because uh, it's better than his Mithril Armor, whatever the hell he has on there. Some of the equipment just doesn't stay around too long in this game, which is sad, but at the same time, there's better stuff you can get, so why not, right? And now we're gonna head north here. And this leads us to a rather strange looking cave area, which has an apple in it. Which I use off screen. And it also has this, another nut for us, which is pretty good. And now we're actually, if you have noticed, back at the secret entrance. Yeah. 
I know I don't use this hot screen, I use it now. Alright. Either way, where I'm actually heading now is actually back to Loompa Fortress. Why? Well, you might remember there was a door we couldn't go through back in Danpa's room here. Now we can go through it. He's thanking us for his help, for our help rather. And he has some reward for us. He has a token of his gratitude he's going to give us since we helped with him earlier. And it's an interesting creature he once fought long ago, though long ago would only really be about... 20-ish parts? Because it's a djinn. And the djinn only got released due to the, uh... whole... Mount Aleph eruption thing. Either way, we got Tonic, which is a pretty useful uh, djinn. It heals all ailments. Uh, if you have any good ailments you want to heal, uh, yeah, it's pretty good. And also, it upgrades her to a Paragon class, which is really good. And now we're back at Toby, because now that we're done with that optional thing, it's time for us to get back to actual plot. Yay. And now I'll take a head to Bobby Lighthouse with Theodem. And we'll go to a new section of the world map, which has new encounters, none of which I run into for some reason. And immediately east is the next town in the game, Suhala, which I actually think is the second to last town in the game. Yeah, we're actually getting somewhat close to the end, I'm not gonna lie. I think this will probably end on part 32. And in here, we have soldiers, which look like ones from Tolby, which means they probably are. And based on this fact, yes. Apparently these are some of Iodem's soldiers that were ordered to check out the lighthouse. Uh, no, not the lighthouse, I was escorting that blonde girl from earlier to Lalivero. Sheba is her name, apparently. You're only supposed to infer that it's her at this point, considering if you talk to her earlier like me, you at least know there's someone strange in that town. Apparently, she was the reason that La Lavera, the one of the last towns, is uh, helping us, uh, helping them out in construction. That was probably very poorly explained, and I apologize for that, but I don't... I, I talk well. No, I don't. I talk crap. Illy. Either way, they're telling us to beware of the sandstorm in the, in the Sahala in the Suhala Desert because uh, that's apparently what puts them into this state. Though some were able to make it through those storms for some reason, and they apparently used water to stop the cyclones. And if they used water, that can mean either they threw water at it or they're in a debt. And the only other mercury debt we know of is Alex. So likely Sadros and Minardi got past us. Actually, they were always past us. They're probably farther along than us, a lot. And also slide the beast, so that even further is that idea. And strange powers, that indeed means it is them. So yeah, Satoros, Minardi, Felix, everyone's ahead of us. And yep, that was probably the ones we're following. So we need to find that Sheba girl as soon as we can. Sheba, Sheba, I'll probably be too much in between the two. And that's just whatever plot enhancement this town has. Now I'm gonna go raid it. There's a smoke or sleep bomb in that house right there. Uh, this is actually an area... Uh, I'm gonna show this little building off here. Uh, this is a, some, a place that a lot of towns have, but I never really went into. Uh, this is where you can revive characters, kill them with poison, remove curses from items and other stuff. It's pretty much a house of healing straight out of Dragon Quest. I'm, I, it's not too useful, but it's there. And a lucky medal. I don't know why I turned Scottish for that, but it did. And the last treasure this town has to offer is a hard nut, which I shall use on... I think... Ivan? Yeah. Poor Ivan, his stats are so crap, but he's so useful in battle. But with that... Well, first off, the last uh, co uh, item in the town is a bit of coins right here. I'm gonna need to end this off here. Thank you guys for watching, and in part 26, we'll be checking out the Suhala Desert. But first off, I'm going to be grinding to level 27, 28 off-screen, and then we'll continue onwards. See you guys then.